I'm Roxanne Hill. It is June 13th, 2019. We're here outside of the parish. Mike, how are you? Me? I'm pretty good. That's good. <laughs> this is your debut tour of New Jersey. That's right. Yeah. 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 I saw that you were just at your mom's place yeah. in Jersey. It's called the Leaving the Garden State Tour, and we left the Garden State four times. Wow. We stayed at my mom's house before Philly, after Philly, after D.C., after New York. So it was a very New Jersey centric, or I should say adjacent tour. So we didn't That's nice. Jersey. Yeah. That, that makes yeah. sense. Very homecoming yeah. type you feel. Yeah. You eat a lot of mom's food. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> How has this album been? How long have you been working on it? Uh, I've been working on it for about a, a year, maybe a year and a half, which is a short time for me. Mm. Um, because I usually spend a couple of years on something. But this one was really born out of a moment in my life where I was just in flux. I, I didn't have a home. I, I, I left San Francisco, then I lived in New Jersey for a while, and then like maybe a month, and then I went to Italy for two weeks, and then eventually landed in Los Angeles. Great, we'll talk to you later. Landed in Los Angeles. Um, and I finished it up at my friend's house that I was uh, plant sitting while I was looking for an apartment. So it's like, it for some reason, embarking on a new phase of my own life made me think about the past and where I came from, how I used to feel, how I used to dream, you know, because I'm living those dreams now, really, you know, um, and it's interesting how they're different from what I thought they would be. Yeah. Great guys. Come on. This has gone great so far. <laughs> so the movie, The Garden. I actually have, um, like, an unnatural distaste for that movie. Really? Yeah, no offense to anyone involved, but I hate what you made, and I think it's terrible. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why that opinion? <laughs> yeah, so I don't strong. know. I just, like, really, really disliked it. Yeah. You don't think that it captured the Garden State very well? Well, it may have done that. I don't know. I felt like it was very contrived. It may, you know, like, the moments that were that everybody latched on to, like... Have you heard of the shins? Oh you know, my like god, that. yeah. Paisley background, Paisley shirt. <laughs> I get it. It's like we're all trying. I think it was a little bit about like I was like writing a book at the time that was quite a bit like it. And I was just like, oh, okay. Since I'm on Scrubs, I get to write a movie. Uh... But little old Mike Denny. So maybe I was a little jealous. Whatever happened with that book? Did the movie just crush your dreams of it? Or? No, it's a really bad book. Oh. <laughs> what was it? Uh, it ended up being called Dear People of Earth and being about something completely different. Really? Okay. Yeah, and that was also bad. I'm a bad novelist. I wanted to be a novelist. Really? But then I was like, I just had to say, you suck at this and you're good at music. So then that's what I did the whole rest of my life. What was that journey like? Like discovering that... Uh, you're better at one thing that maybe you were wanting to be good at. Yeah. Well, I, I turned to the person next to me and I was like, you know what? I'm not so good at writing novels. And he was like, have you ever thought about music? And then there was this swell of like moving M83 music. And I was like, maybe I can do that. Love that. Yeah. Very poetic. Mm -hmm. How did you get your start in music? Uh, like when did people start paying attention to it? Or when did I start? Making when did you start? Oh, I started making it. Well, you know, six years old, piano lessons. But okay. then it really started to be something that I associated my identity with uh, when, when I was nine, when I started playing the saxophone. Because I was bad at a lot of things, not just novel writing, but sports, too, and uh, feeling comfortable in public. Mm. Uh, but, like, music sort of made, allowed me to sidestep all the natural inroads to society and just be like, oh... You're, like, the best saxophonist in school. Therefore, like, we accept you. And I was like, oh, thank you. I'll continue along this path. Yeah. So it was, like, really the thing, I think, that made me not be miserable for most of my young life. Gotcha. And, uh, obviously, it's a wonderful thing to do. It feels good to do. Other people respond to it really well, you know? So it's, like, this pretty thing in my life. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I started writing songs when I was 12. Uh, recording them on a little cassette tape recorder, four track. Um, yeah, I made albums and I sold them in school. And, yeah. Wow, an yeah. entrepreneur at 12. Oh yeah, I was not giving anybody that one for free. Five <laughs> bucks or you don't get to listen. 
wow. most people didn't get to this. <laughs> <laughs> one of your albums, um, Endless Motion Volume 1, yeah. that's a lot of covers from Kate Bush yeah. and uh, Paul Simon, New Order. Um, would you say that those are obviously some people who influenced oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why, so I, I plan to do a bunch of those, which is why I call it Volume 1. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like whatever is, is strongly influencing me at that time. I mean, Paul Simon will always be influencing me. Cape, I was in a huge Kate Bush phase. That was pretty much like when I discovered her. Um, Arthur Russell, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, you know, it's interesting to think about embarking on a new one. Because there aren't necessarily that many new influences but di like that I haven't heard before. Yeah. But different people from my past that I've listened to are, you know, they've become a spike in importance in my creative like creative bent so yeah we'll see who, we'll see who's next gotcha <laughs> um if you were to find parallels between you and another artist um who would you say it would be hair wise identify george clooney okay um, i see it yeah music i don't know there are i don't there are no parallels because every single person is has such a different story like yeah. when you're a like a musician who wants to make it you're just like constantly reviewing other people's story of making it mm -hmm. and hoping that you can apply it to your own. But then you realize every single person's is different, you know? Yeah. It's just like, which is really interesting because it is, you're just doing the same thing with the same tools in the same industry, but there's just, there's no rubric for it. There's so many different ways to succeed and fail. Yeah, but I had an interview a couple weeks ago with Josh Hodges from Star um, yeah, yeah. And you uh, remixed? Yeah, I remixed yeah, maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, I was really psyched to get that phone call. Yeah, did you work with them personally or? Well, I met them at. The um, great, thanks. Appreciate that. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> those are just my high school friends. You know how they can be. <laughs> um, I met them at the Fillmore when they played the Fillmore. Um, and we just like chatted and got along really well. And then when it came time for them to do their remix album, they just reached out and were like, you want to do Maps? I don't know if it was because of Geographer, you know, Maps, but it was a really cool song to remix because it was so, there were so many possibilities with it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it starts out instrumental for a long time, mm -hmm. and then there's just this awesome vocal that kicks in, and I just could hear immediately what I wanted to do with it. Yeah. Um, and that's always how good remixes go. It's like, yeah, like when I hear exactly what I would do with something, it just makes me so excited. And then it's just about getting stuff down into the computer fast yeah. enough. And I finished it pretty quickly, but then I worked on it for a really long time, like getting it just right. Yeah, that was really fun. That's my favorite remix I've ever done. Really? It, it did really well, and I was really psyched about that. Yeah. Yeah. Paris off of um, Animal, Animal Shapes. Shapes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the lyric, time is a mouth to feed, that's the email that's linked to your Instagram page. Oh, is it? That's yeah, I, think so. I don't want anyone emailing me. So okay. I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it had and some time special... time is a mouth to feed. Truly. So. Emails just pile Maybe. up. What is it? Time is a mouth to feed at gmail.com? <laughs> <I think so. laughs> so that wasn't your doing or... No, just trolling. Just trolling. <laughs> Every album is different in its own way. Um... You worked a lot with being, or one of your central focuses I read was being an act for Animal Shapes, and then you're working with experimental sounds with... Oh yeah, like the live performance was the focus of Animal yeah, Shapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like I always have a goal mm -hmm. with an album. And what would with, you say like New Jersey is? New Jersey's goal, what is New Jersey's goal? I think New Jersey's goal was just to make something that meant a lot to me. Because I think I had I, I had witnessed myself, and it's like I, I'm reticent to critique my own work, but that's all I do, mm -hmm. you know. But I guess I'm reticent to do it in an interview because nobody wants to hear you disparage your own work, right? But like, of course they do. As I'm like grow, growing in my own eyes and and for my own purposes musically, like I had seen myself sort of my goals were getting more and more uh, technical, and I wanted to get back to like um, that heat in the chest you know that mm -hmm. like that feeling in the practice space where yeah. like you're, you're you, you get goosebumps when you sing the chorus like mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted that so I really just like and I was in a really tumultuous point in my life so it was easy it was like it was like the earth was rent open 
and, and the sulfur was coming up and then I just harvested that so that's what I wanted to do I wanted to do like something that just I don't know was just steeped in in meaningful and not contrite nostalgia it's too bad those guys wouldn't want to hear that They're I know so well you were talking about those moments that give you goosebumps when you sing the yeah. chorus what's a song that you perform live that you still feel that way um it's different night to night because it's really all about like tapping into it because there's a lot of distractions on stage you know like the way it sounds or like the crowd mm -hmm. or maybe you made a mistake but so when everything is perfect and like the crowd is locked in your in-ear mix sounds great and you're just like playing wonderfully when that happens uh some of my discontentment and love is wasted in the dark are usually like the big ones i mean those ones I have, like I'll have to like fight back like a well of emotion you know because they're really personal um yeah and it's sort of it's interesting with those really personal songs because you you don't think about singing it every night for two months when, yeah when you write it and often like you move past you like you you've healed yeah and then you're just sort of like reopening that scab and sometimes I'm just like oh ow what it's all about, I guess. You recorded a music video for um, Summer of My Discontentment. Yeah, um, and Love's Way Super Dark, yeah. Right, okay. Um, what were those, um, like, were they buddies of yours in them, or? No, that was a guy, a guy who reached out, um, or my manager found, I'm not sure how that worked. But yeah, he, he came to me with a concept, and then I sort of, I had a concept too, and we sort of smushed them together. Um, like, I just wanted it to be I really wanted Summer of My Discontentment to mirror the subject matter of the song, which mm -hmm. is like, it's sort of like a, like a take on, um, or the same idea behind the 1979, uh, the Smashing Pumpkins song, mm. which is just like a bunch of stupid high school boys being stupid, yeah. you know, and, and I, like, that's kind of what the song is about, but seeing it through a lens of, of romantic idealism, mm -hmm. like that time of just the the grace of just not knowing anything you know and the purity of those dreams so we, i talked with him a lot and then we worked out a way to like try to capture that visually mm -hmm. got a bunch of young looking actors and, and i also sang on the cliff side if you were to say that an age was a time or, or turning point in your life that pushed you toward music or books mm -hmm. or yeah, yeah whatever artistically what was the moment uh it made me choose art over yeah. a normal life um i don't know i guess i kind of felt from the time like as early as i can remember that i was going to do something like that i think mm -hmm. my parents were just extremely encouraging with my creativity but the, but i also you know i went to school for i studied english and literature and italian and i was like I'm gonna be like a, I don't know, work in academia or something. But then just my college experience, you know, I'm just not really cut out for that, not meant for that. I don't like to play those games. So I think going through college, getting a great education, and then realizing that that was all I wanted, you know? Like I didn't want to then give others a great education. Like I wanted to be a novelist more than I wanted to write books. Like the, the act of writing a book is not very stimulating for me, but writing songs is like a beautiful experience. And then I think with like the, the tragedies that, that happened to my family, I, it, I needed something to cope. And then music writing was so cathartic. Mm -hmm me that it was just like a means of passing through those feelings and and digging out a little foxhole from which I could live gotcha yeah that's awesome thank you so much Mike this has been Mike of Geographer um thanks for listening